Shalom. Today we're going to take a little side trail uh, out from the astronomical signs of the calendar and actually discuss the calendar. Uh, part of the reason I'm going to do this right now is because we're coming uh, into a, a leap year in the Hebrew calendar, in the Jewish calendar, and so we'll have an extra month. Anyway, I've already done the uh, presentation for the coming up month, the 12th month, Adar, and uh, you can find that um, at the presentation, which is on the screen here. So today we're just going to try and understand how the Jewish calendar works, the traditional Jewish calendar. It's a little bit complex and confusing from year to year. Uh, I'm not endorsing any calendar that we use this calendar or not, but maybe this will be useful information if you know a Jewish person to understand how they are tracking their holidays. This calendar is attributed to Hillel II, who was the Nasi, or the president of the Sanhedrin, in the fourth century. It's not actually documented uh, when they put it into place exactly, but it is attributed to him. This is not to be confused with the first uh, century Hillel, when we talk about the house of Hillel and the house of Shammai, this is some descendant of his uh, about 300 years later. So the traditional Jewish calendar is a, a luni solar calendar. It incorporates both the movements of the sun and of the moon. The moon's phases are governed by its rotation around the earth and that uh, covers a lunar calendar and otherwise uh, the solar calendar is governed by the position of the earth as it goes around the sun. As it is written in Genesis 1:14, and God said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. That word seasons there is moadim you know it it's the appointed times but also we see that the both lights are appointed for the years and so we can safely come to a conclusion that this is a good way to govern our year. Now the word month and the idea of a month is connected to the moon as we can see from some gobbledygook from an online etymology, the origin of words dictionary. We see that the word month is uh, comes from the moon and that the month has been calculated from the lunar phases and we find this in many many civilizations for thousands of years. Now the solar year, the time that it takes for the earth to rotate around the sun is 365 days, 5 hours, 49 minutes and 1.2 seconds. I have not counted this up myself but I'm relying on traditional scientific information available from the internet. So what we're looking at is about 365 and a quarter days. It's a little bit less than that. We'll talk about that later. So we need about one extra day every four years. And as you know, we have uh, February 29th, as we have this year in 2016. It's a uh, multiple of a fourth year. We, every fourth year we have an extra day and then in the round numbers of the hundreds uh, we don't have that day and this keeps up very very close we'll see how close later to the actual cycle of the earth going around the sun. A lunar cycle is 29 days 12 hours 44 minutes and 2.9 seconds which is a little more than 29 and a half days. So if you take your months and alternate them, 129, 130, one month 29 days, one month 30 days, you will come out to a 354 day year. And you can see right away that that's going to be short uh, by 11 days of a solar year. Now the Muslim calendar is strictly lunar and so they actually lose those 11 days every year. 
The Muslim calendar began in the year 622 of the Common Era, or uh, AD, and that year is labeled 1AH, which stands for Anno Hij or Hijara, um, the year that uh, Muhammad made his flight from Mecca to Medina. And uh, so that was their year one. Now, if we subtract 2016 minus uh, 622, according to solar reckoning, we can see that their calendar started thir uh, 1,394 years ago for a solar reckoning. But they themselves say that they are in the year 1437, and the difference of those, you know, 40 years uh, has to do with their having lo lost 11 solar days out of every year. <clears throat> so their holidays go backwards through, uh, through their calendar. So for example, Ramadan is a certain time, one year, then it's 11 days earlier, the next year, and the next year, and the next year. And so it can be, it can appear anywhere around the calendar. Uh, according to the traditional Jewish calendar with its calculations, we find that the same feasts are in the same seasons. And this probably has something to do with an agriculturally based society. In other words, uh, in agriculture, it, if you're not an agricultural society, it doesn't matter when spring is, it doesn't matter when you plant. But if you are an agricultural society, then you need to know those things. So it appears that this calendar came with the people out of Babylon. It, it began to um, be established when the people were in the original exile in Babylon. And it turns out very nicely that if you have uh, a lunar cycle, as we were talking about, where you would have the alternating days, 29, 30, 29, 30, and then, so that would add up, if you have 12 of those, to a 354-day year. Then um, if you add an extra month in the third year, as shown here, and in the sixth year, an extra month of 30 days, at the end of eight years, you would have 2,922 days, which exactly matches the solar cycle, which adds a day every fourth year. So you can see in year four, there's 366 days, in year eight, 366 days. So that system can work out pretty nicely for keeping the two together. Now, the names of the months in a traditional Jewish calendar are uh, starting uh, in the traditional Jewish New Year. The month is Tishrei. For some people, we consider that to be the seventh month because uh, the Father did give Moses the springtime month of Aviv or Nisan to be the first month of the year. But traditional Jewish calendar starts in Tishrei. Tishrei, Cheshvan, Kislev, Tevet, Shavat, which we're about to exit, Adar, the following month, Nisan, Iyar, Sivan, Tammuz, Av, Elul. Um, the other presentations on the astronomical signs cover the origins of these names and what they mean and if they have meaning in Hebrew or not. But these are the traditional 12 months. According to ancient sources such as the Talmud and so on, the calendar was set as follows. Uh, people, designated witnesses, would be waiting for the moon to see it. They knew it would be either in the 29th day or the 30th day they would be able to see the moon. They would bring their evidence to the Sanhedrin, and the Sanhedrin would declare the new moon. And that was communicated to the people by signal fires sent from village to village, from town to town, hill to hill, the people would know that the new month had been declared in Jerusalem where the Sanhedrin was. Uh, in the springtime, as it came round time to see, did we need the extra month or not? That was decided uh, by the Sanhedrin on a year-by-year -year basis on the evidence of agricultural production, the evidence of the rainy season. They would decide, should we have this extra month or not? By the first century, the Samaritans were setting false fires to confuse the Jews so that they wouldn't really know when the correct timing was. And in the year 70, the people were exiled from the land uh, for the second time. 
And so communication became very difficult. Even in the second century, they were trying to standardize the calendar because of the difficulty of the communications, the confusion from other peoples and the distance of the land. We find that even today, Jews will celebrate, Jews outside the land of Israel will celebrate two days for, uh, for the new year. We have two Passover seders, and you can find some evidence for this even in the book of Esther where it talks about when the Jews rise up against uh, the people of Haman, uh, when the battle was scheduled, that they, they gave an extra day to the people outside the land to uh, be killing the Persians. So the witnesses to the moon actually just became a formality. The, the calendar was already standardized um, by the fourth century due to the persecutions where people were forbidden to keep holidays and it was impossible to have good communication. So already in the fourth century, people were taking the standardized calendar to use for their celebrations. To further complicate matters, there is a set of uh, what's called Rosh Hashanah postponement rules, or the first of Tishrei, what we would call the first of trumpets. These involve uh, two problems. The first is that Yom Kippur cannot be on a Friday or Sunday. If Yom Kippur were to fall on Friday, it would not be possible to make necessary preparations for Shabbat. And there are all kind of legendary and apocryphal stories about Eve complaining to Adam about uh, this problem. And if Yom Kippur falls on Sunday, then it's not possible to make the preparations for Yom Kippur because the day before is Shabbat. So they prevent those things. Also, uh, Hoshana Rabbah, which is the seventh day of Sukkot, the final day of Sukkot, if that falls on Shabbat, then certain rituals um, would be uh, prohibited. For example, carrying the lulav and the etrog, there's a lot of um, ceremony that involves that on the seventh day. It's all traditional, and I'm not saying that we have to do it. I'm explaining to you what traditional Jews do and why their calendar looks the way it does. So they, uh, so they prevent Hoshana Rabbah from also falling on Shabbat. And so we see that all these things up lead up to the first of Tishrei, which is considered to be the new year by traditional Jews, can only fall on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or Saturday. So there's all kind of great manipulation that takes place within the calendar to provide for these postponement rules. So now the calendar uh, looks like this. In the spring side, we see that the Months are always alternating between 30 and 29, 31, 29 days. Tishrei always has 30. Uh, Cheshvan and Kislev are variable. They might be 29 or 30, depending upon the postponement rules. Tevet and Shavat are always the same. Adar will vary depending upon whether there's the second month of Adar, which is called Adar Bet or Adar Sheni. Um, the second one, it always has 29 days. And the holiday, uh, there is a holiday of Purim which takes place during that month, will be celebrated in the second one. But the month of Adar will vary 29 or 30 depending upon all the other calculations. So a non leap year can have anywhere from 353 to 355 days. And a leap year will have either 383 or 385 days, depending on all those manipulations and calculations. It's a 19-year cycle, which is not uncommon. There are other civilizations that use a similar cycle, 19-year cycle, to keep their lunar and solar calendars aligned to the seasons. There are seven leap years in uh, Jewish calendar in the 17 in the 19 years and so the leap years occur in 3 6 8 11th year 14th 17th 19 years so the years where the leap years occur 
The traditional Jewish calendar actually exceeds the Gregorian year, which is our solar calendar that we use by 6 minutes and 39.37 seconds uh, compared to the 500 some odd thousand seconds that are in a year. Um, it's a, just a minuscule amount of difference. Um, it seems like, depending upon who you read, every 231 or 237 or 238 years, the traditional Jewish calendar falls one day behind the Gregorian calendar year. And actually, both calendars have a problem which is called creep. Even though both calendars are based on very precise calculations, there is still the difference between the exact solar year and the exact lunar cycle so that um, the Jewish calendar uh, shifts one day about every 15,776 years. So if you're still around in 236,652 years, we will actually find the start of the month uh, moving to the full moon instead of the new moon. Um, it, the Gregorian calendar, the solar calendar, also has a creep which moves one day every 3,330 years. So after about 600,000 years, uh, summer will be in winter and winter will be in summer, but that will not be a problem for the people in Australia. Anyway, I hope that this has been somewhat enlightening and useful for you. We are indeed still waiting, and so I encourage you to seem at Ha'inayim Ahashamayim. Keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom. We are moving through time to yes, kingdom without end to the holy cities, the new Jerusalem.